what are some of the most common misconceptions that people have that real historical work on the setting of the New Testament can help to dissolve? One of the big ones, I think, which comes back again and again is to see Jesus as a teacher of morality or indeed a teacher of something we call a religion or indeed somebody telling people how to go to heaven after they die. There's absolutely nothing in the Gospels saying this is how to get to heaven rather than that. When Jesus talks about the kingdom of heaven, and this is an absolutely solid result of historical work, that doesn't mean a place called heaven conceived as a kingdom. It means the idea that God, the one who lives in heaven, wants to set up his kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. So one of the great gains, I think, of the last couple of generations of scholarship is to see Jesus' announcement of the kingdom not as a way of saying, here's how to go to the kingdom called heaven when you die, but as a way of saying, what I'm telling you is something new is happening right now. God is launching his kingdom project on earth as in heaven, and this is what it looks like, this stuff that I'm doing. So I think that's a, a great gain, and not everyone would agree with with this, but I think this is very solidly established. And what, what's happened in the last, oh well, a long time, since at least the Middle Ages, but then given extra impetus in the last 200 years, is people have been eager to tone down the idea of Jesus saying something definite is happening as a result of which everything is going to be different across the world, into saying, here's a way you might like to reorder your moral life, your spiritual life. You see what that does? It turns the good news into good advice. And the whole point of the New Testament, and again, this is something which I think as historians we can now feel the force of more than we used to, is that it really is designed as good news. Something is happening as a result of which everything's going to be different. Now, in Jesus' day, the idea of good news, and again, we can anchor this very strongly through first century history, it resonates or clashes with the fact that the Roman emperors were going around or their emissaries were going around saying, good news, Tiberius has become emperor. That means we're going to have peace and security and you're going to have rescue from all your enemies and good government and justice and so on. And that message of good imperial news is then deeply um, subverted, if you like, by the message in the Gospels, which is the good news that there is one God who has sent Jesus who is totally unlike any Roman emperor you ever imagined. And it seems to me putting the message of the Gospels, instead of in some vague, generalized religious sphere, here's somebody teaching us interesting ideas about religion, might be Muhammad, might be Buddha, happens to be Jesus, so what? No, Jesus is saying something very definite. Stuff is happening here and now in and through what he's doing, and will happen in and through his death and resurrection, which will transform the way the world is. And that's a very definite and shocking claim, which of course people resisted in, at the time and resist ever since. The, the, I mean, I, I, my first degree was partly in ancient history, and the more I do the ancient history, the more this stuff comes up in three dimensions and prevents the Gospels from falling back into this idea of, of Jesus just going around dispensing good advice all over the place. Mm -hmm.